Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're adding to our growing series on racist shit from TV and film with some inspiration from this Lethal Weapon 4 scene. Hey, Uncle Benny, how you doing? I hope this is a bad time. Hey, Rod, he still hasn't clipped his eyebrows. I have something to eat. Give you the police discount. Fly lice? Fly lice. It is fry rice, you click. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <sighs> okay. Anyway, fried lice, or fried rice, you prick, as Uncle Benny says, is actually a dish that we have done in this series many times already, including kimchi fried rice, spam fried rice, and crispy skillet seared fried rice. That said though, I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to explore one of my favorite classic approaches to this dish that my dad used to do when I was a kid with leftovers from breakfast, which is a lap chong fried rice. For those who are not familiar, lap chong is a form of Chinese sausage made from pork and occasionally organ meat for the adventurous. It comes up in many, many savory Chinese dishes and you may recognize it from our zhongzi and panset recipes as well. What has always stood out to me though is its particularly fragrant nature since it is iconically seasoned with Szechuan peppercorn. In addition, we'll also be boning up the heat of our dish with some doubanjang and laoganma for a super pervasive and oily heat as well. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so kicking things off, I'm starting off as we often do by preparing our aromatic elements here first. This is four cloves of crushed and minced garlic, followed by one inch or about one tablespoon of finely minced ginger. Then next, I'm chopping up three green onions here, separating the whites and greens. All together, the garlic, ginger, and the whites of our green onions will work as our aromatic elements in our wok fry, which will be blooming very first for their fragrant nature. Then we'll thinly slice the greens of our green onions on a bias and set them aside as a finishing garnish at the very end. Moving on to our vegetable elements, now I'm a strong proponent of using frozen veggies in fried rice whenever possible. This is because their frozen nature helps keep them crispy in the wok fry since they'll simply defrost in the wok heap for a crispy and crunchy quality on the table. So to that end, we're going to be using some frozen peas and frozen corn here, but I am going to work in some fresh carrots here though since they are a little bit more durable and can withstand the wok fry without turning mushy. We're peeling and then dicing these and then setting them aside as we move on to our proteins. First up is the highlight of our show, which is the lap chong sausage. I'm slicing these up on a very large bias so that we can get these really long coin shapes here. This is gonna help our sausage really pop out in the final dish since you'll notice our lap chong is already rather narrow in size. Then moving on to our eggs, I'm combining two eggs with one teaspoon of Shaoxing wine plus half a teaspoon of cornstarch. You'll recognize this as something that we often do in a lot of wok fried eggs. The Shaoxing wine will bring a bright quality that is gonna feel really familiar to most wok fried eggs you've ever had. And the cornstarch is gonna help keep them from turning rubbery in the wok fry. Moving on to our sauce next, I'm keeping the baseline of our flavors here fairly Americanized and kind of leaning into a sweeter quality to really give this dish more of a Chinese American feel. This is four tablespoons of soy sauce and two tablespoons of sesame oil to start, followed by two tablespoons each of rice vinegar for some brightness and hoisin sauce for some sweetness. Then finally for our bolder heat elements, this is one tablespoon of Chinese fermented chili paste or doubanjang for more of a punchy form of heat, followed by two tablespoons of chili crisp oil or lao gan ma for more of a subtle heat which should contrast really nicely with the doubanjang. Finally, I'm rounding all of this out with a pinch of kosher salt to taste and we're heading over to the stove. Over on the stove, I have my wok heating up as hot as possible, and then I'm adding four tablespoons of peanut oil, and as always, long yao for your non-stick surface. Then I'm starting off with my lap chong and carrots here first, cause we want to give these a little bit of a head start to make sure our lap chong can properly brown in the wok fry while it's still empty. 
Then I'm going to add my aromatics next, but just like we do when we add them first, we still want to make sure this stuff makes contact with the wax oil in order to bloom out their aromatic qualities. So I'm using some street cooking technique here and pushing everything in my wok to one side. Then I'm adding my aromatic garlic, ginger, and the whites of my green onions, making sure that they have a solid 10 seconds in the hot oil before tossing to combine. This is going to make sure we still bloom out the aromatic qualities of these three elements, even though we didn't add them first into an empty wok like we normally do. Then next up, I'm pushing everything to one side again, and we're going to do the exact same thing with our eggs. I'm giving these about 10 to 20 seconds to set before we toss to combine. Just like with our aromatics, we want to make sure that these eggs also make good contact with the wok surface as well, otherwise we'll end up with more of an egg and sausage scramble rather than egg curds scattered throughout the fry. Next up, I'm adding my leftover rice here about a third at a time to make sure that we're properly breaking up any clumps. Now, a very important side note, you can only make fried rice with leftover rice. Do not try to use freshly made rice here, otherwise the moisture of the fresh rice will give you a super soggy and porridgey quality. If you don't happen to have any leftover rice on hand, you can also just make some fresh rice and pop it into the fridge with the top off for about 2-3 to three hours until it turns stale. Finally, I'm adding my sauce mixture here about a quarter cup at a time, being careful not to over season. As always, remember don't go dumping all of this in at once. You'll want to pay attention to how the rice is looking and tasting at this point, and be very cautious of over seasoning here. Last up, I'm rounding everything off with my frozen peas and corn. As you can see, these are literally coming right out of my freezer into the wok, because we basically want these things to defrost in the plate to keep them from turning mushy. Nobody likes mushy peas, am I right? Then I'm topping all of this off with the greens of my green onions, and we're ready to eat. Alright, so this fried rice came out perfectly and just sort of nailed the leftover breakfast fried rice vibe that I was trying to recreate here. When I was a kid, I remember my dad used to make scrambled eggs and sausage for breakfast and then would throw the leftovers into a fried rice for lunch later that day. So this one is full of some after school snack nostalgia for me. One other thing that I do remember about that fried rice, however, is that I also recall dumping a lot of soy sauce into my dad's version because it was a little bland. Don't tell him I said that. So I think our addition of hoisin, rice vinegar, doubanjang, and lao ganma really solves that problem. Then finally, of course, our lapchang sausage is packed with savory umami, almost like a cheat code to flavor, which works perfectly in this dish. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot yourself. You may have noticed that I served this one in a plastic to-go container today. That's because this is one of the fried rices that we're offering on the new Wukang Cook virtual restaurant, which you can order through the app Chef if you happen to live in the SF Bay Area. Follow the link in the description if you want to learn more about that stuff. Also, let me know if you have any questions about subs here. As with most fried rices, this one is super adaptable, so feel free to get creative with your own attempts. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, press some buttons, and I'll see you soon. Down the bottom of the bottom of the way down.